Hey guys, we're past all palms and we're on, we're on the, the couch. On the, on the couch. This is our song, it's called Fake Blondes. Yourself? Oh, I gotta start. My name's Andrew Simpson. I've known Joel for a couple of years, played in another band together, and I'm glad to be doing this. <laughs> Follow me on Don Vaughn Music. He just played his own band. <laughs> I hate this guy. I'm Joel. I'm a singer, guitarist of Pastel Palms. This used to be my love, my brainchild. Then I got my friends into it, and now I've had, I've never had as much fun doing music as I've had doing this band. Uh, my name is Eric Kingston. Uh, hi, mom, and I'm really nervous. That's all I have to say. Did you just do a Jamaican accent? <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> Yeah, 
He's on the He's So we're gonna start. First question: How do you think your sounds changed since you released your first album in July? It has changed dramatically. We are now experimenting with our new album that we've been working on for about a year. It's gonna be called Subsonic Daydreams, and each song, there's gonna be 12 songs, each representing each month of the year. Each song will represent a, like a story or a meaningful event in that life that hopefully that can relate to people. Um, we used to be like a more like beachy kind of rock band. Now we're going more into alternative shoegaze music and like, like post-rock ambient stuff. So, what inspired that like twelve song, one for each month kind of album? What got you into that idea? It was honestly during um, yeah, pretty rough years. All all of us have been going through some stuff, and we had like me and Andrew especially. We like we bonded over some like things that have happened in our youth and stuff like that. And ever since then, like I don't know, I was thinking about like just developing a piece of artwork or media that can assist or help people and like nothing's more relatable than the months we all have to experience that stuff and I feel like everyone experiences seasonal depression everyone experiences the joy of spring and all this stuff and you can create something that aligns to those experiences it could be really meaningful to people yeah so is it therapeutic for you to like put those experiences into a song or is it ever like difficult to do that it is it's pretty, that's why it's been a year in the making. Like, we've been um, working on songs. I've even told, like, Eric and Andrew to write their own songs for their own month. And they talked about stuff that they want to talk about. And they were, I can tell when they talk about their songs or show me some parts from their songs or smiling about it. Because I feel like they're actually, it's helping them too. And it's like every song that I write for the album is like, it's me, it, I'm trying to make it meaningful. Because I'm, I'm tired of this stigma of, like, DIY indie people just making stuff like about stupid stuff. And if, I feel like it's like, I don't know, I'm tired of it. I wanna make something that actually like, can help people or me or just be cathartic for other people. Awesome, so I'm gonna, another question we're gonna do, what's your favorite song to perform live for each of you? I, Andrew can go first. Hmm, I don't know. Definitely have to be one of our newer songs, but then our older songs, I would say full. That's my favorite. Mm -hmm. yeah. That one gives me like... Mm. You took my answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> but like our newer one, we performed live. Is that my favorite? It's January. Yeah. Yeah. I have to agree with that. I think January is probably really good. You guys haven't heard it yet. Unless you guys saw us live. Yeah, I don't have it recorded just yet. But I think it's pretty good. It fits exactly what I want. Like post-rock stuff, ambient pads. We, we've been developing that song for about months now. So we're pretty excited to put it out. Yeah. Uh... I would say Fool, because there's a lot of, like, hard-hitting, uh, like, crescendos. It's just a really good, like, crowd-building song, something you can dance to. It really, like, builds up, and then it quickly resolves, and it's very groovy. It's super, like, groovy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's just, it's a really diverse song that's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, so, kind of bouncing off that last question, what song do you guys think audiences like react to most live oh gosh man it's obvious it's fake blondes it's like it's always fake blondes like i was surreal as heck because we're a relatively new man like we only have like about you know like about a thousand like people on instagram and like like you know like we just broke to like 1000 songs in our streams like we have fans in like brazil and france and canada like it's really surprising it's surreal to see that and people will dm me about fake blondes like all the time Every time we perform that song live, like, I can hear people in the audience saying the lyrics, which is crazy to me, because I don't even, like, sing the lyrics right. Like, like I suck at that. Yeah. I never sing the lyrics right. And I'm like, dang, I'm, like, all the people, like, are singing the lyrics way better than I am. <laughs> like, they just know the lyrics, and it's kind of crazy. It's, it's surreal. Like, it's, like, people, like, like um, actually really liking the song so much that you made and they're, they were able to memorize the lyrics and sing it live. It's just such a cool experience to have. Sweet. So what is your each of your like favorite um, like show that you've played in the last year? Well, that's a, that's, we've had some really, really fun shows. You want to start the other way? Yeah. Let's, oh, gosh. Uh, I'd say the last Lumpy show, because if that's anyone so doesn't cool. know, Lumpy's was like a local house show venue, and that place was just so fun. And it was the last one, and we were really fortunate to be able to, like, yeah. be, like, the last band to ever play. Yeah. So it wasn't just, like, everyone came out to support us, but it was just to support, like, Lumpies and, like, DIY music in Jax as, like, a whole. 
and everyone was just was just like having such a great time. Everyone was dancing. It was it was just really emotional. So I'd say the last yeah. Lumpy show was definitely. The best one. That's definitely my answer. Like let me paint. If you guys weren't there, you had to be there, bro. It was a movie. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that. Okay, that was a joke. But like like it was like people were on the roofs. Like like intervention were, was playing. Like freaking yeah, the floor felt like it was gonna fall in when intervention was playing. Yes, dude. Like there were so many people moshing to intervention. The the foundation of the house was moving. Yeah. And like. When we were playing, I was getting moshed like while playing the music. People were pushing me. I was like, what is going on? Like like you're like I'm just trying to play like a song, like a solo. Like somebody hits my hand with their elbow and I'm like, oh god. I can't oh alright, alright. Yeah. That was so fun. Like, yeah, it was it was a great time, I guess. I was gonna say that one, but just to be different, I'm gonna say the first time we played at Lumpy's oh. house, just cause it was kinda like <laughs> We were like rolling the dice, you know? <laughs> we were we were rolling the dice. I had never been there, but once I left that first time, I was like, wow, we didn't tell everybody about Lumpy's because it's like, yeah. it's I'm, I'm kind of wanting to say this, it's better than a lot of venues. It's true, it, it's true. It's, it's way my first better public statement. <laughs> this one is called February. It's off an upcoming album. Five years. Eric, you want to start again? Oh gosh. Well, hopefully we're still together. Uh, I hope that we can keep making music 
and if not together, I just hope that all of us just do our own things and keep making music for people. But, and if, I hope we're together, but if we're not, I'm definitely gonna look back and be like, this was a really great way to like start off like college for me. Yeah. Just like doing stuff like this is super cool. <laughs> so I don't know, it's just a really nice, nice environment that I can like say I started college off with. So. Yeah, I, I agree with that. that. I went here when I first started going to college and I kind of wish I had like the structure I had now when I first started. Cause when I first started at UNF, I was like kind of like very on my own. Yeah. And I wish I had more, you know, friends and concentration on things. Yeah, I say here. I think in five years, this is okay. This is my realistic expectation and goal. I think in five years we're all gonna be adults and we're not gonna have time for the band. But you know what's gonna happen? We're gonna be a legendary like DIY band. We're gonna have like obscure people from like Japan are gonna like us for no reason. We're gonna have like a bunch of like 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 press and stuff. We'll never know about it. Like 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 it'll be like it'll just be like we'll be famous after we die. That's my goal. I want to be famous after we all die. All right. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's just what I want. We're gonna have. Lamborghini buses. <laughs> we're gonna be on tour. Our band is gonna be successful in five years. I don't know what y'all are talking about. Get that DIY shit out of your head. We're gonna be successful. <laughs> Lamborghini buses? I don't think yes. they, do they make yeah, buses. Yeah, Mercedes buses. Why can't, you know? But why, well, why Lamborghini buses? Because they had a lot of streams. <laughs> we're gonna be the biggest artist ever in five years. We're gonna, we're gonna top Drake. We're gonna top Michael Jackson and the Beatles. Yes. Combined. <laughs> So, so after those bold statements, what do you guys think <laughs> makes your sound like unique? I think, I mean, honestly, I think we have a lot of diverse music tastes here. Yeah. Like, like we have a lot of experience. These both of these guys were. You guys are in jazz band and like um and band like marching band. Like that experience, like you can tell it like goes into how you read and write music. I can mm -hmm. tell that. Like our experiences are different. We're a pretty diverse band. I mean, like. It's not very common to have, like, you know, to be honest, like an indie band not comprised of solely white dudes in their 20s is kind of cool to me. I kind of like the fact that we are diverse. And, like, not just, like, in, in, in general, I feel like it's cool to have somebody in the scene. Like, maybe, like, some kids, like, aren't inspired, like, because it's, like, these artists don't look like me. I don't know. I know it might be, like, kind of, like, weird or conceited. I don't, I hope I'm not sounding like that, but I think it should be, it'll be cool if I saw more... Asian kids, black kids in like rock bands and stuff like that, instead of just normal, like the normal white guy in a band. No knock on white guys, you guys are cool. <laughs> you guys are cool. Yeah, there's a lot of people, like types of people I never would have like interacted with if I hadn't like met you and started getting into this scene. So it made me a lot more comfortable with myself because of like what you just said. Cause I've been in like hardcore music and like metal and rock and I kind of didn't have a lot of people like me to share that with. But you know, you know, thing goes, you know, things change over time. But also, like, would you get your, to your question? It's I had to learn a lot from Joel about like things sound better. They don't have to be complicated to sound good. People have said that, but like, there he's I understand like there's like a middle ground. I had to learn that. And honestly, he taught me that. Man, I write some stupidly simple stuff. I need to spice it up a little bit. Just it's a, like, a little bit. Yeah, like, I'm like, three chords, that's it. That's all I need, guys. And then he's like, what? That's boring as heck. I don't want to play I'm this. I'm not like that. I I'm mean, you kind of like that. <laughs> you're, you're like, you're like, oh, this is, uh. and I'm like, oh, dude, it's just three chords. And like, wait a minute, it's just three chords. We need to write more, like, complex music. That's another thing is like, like I, I was talking about this is like, I feel like indie rock and stuff is like, we're like in a cycle and you need to change that. Like you need to put, you need to inject more influences. I'm actually trying to write a song completely in Thai in the album. I want to write and sing it in Thai because I'm a Thai, I'm from Thailand. I'm not from America, and I think it'd be really cool to put that in in the band just to be like, hey, we're not just your average band because you gotta stick out nowadays, especially when you sound very similar to anybody else. Oh yeah, yeah. That's why I try to say like, shoegaze is kind of like coming back. So I was like, I wanna be a part of that movement of uh, resurrecting shoegaze music. I love shoegaze music. So, yeah. Awesome. So thank you guys for coming. Do you guys want to uh, 
like plug anything at the end, say anything, any upcoming shows. I don't know. I don't know about shows <laughs> happening yeah, right now, actually, but just any social stuff like that. Stream up. And just stream and support us. We're on everything. Like we're on Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, Google Music, TikTok. We're on TikTok. What? Uh, we're on TikTok. Um, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know it either. <laughs> and so DistroKid said, "You guys are on live on TikTok." Oh, Twenty yeah. months after I uploaded it, I was oh. like, "What?" But um, we're working hard on our album. It's probably gonna take. I don't know. Like at this rate, we're trying our hardest. Like it's been about a year. It might be another year at this rate. I'm working hard on it, and we're all working hard on it. So thank you for having us, Spinnaker. You guys have been nothing but nice and hospitable. Thank you, Noah. Thank you, Darwin. Boom, operator. <laughs> Emma for coming. She's not even on the clock. Crazy. Awesome. Yeah, thank you guys for coming. Thank you. All right, this song is about public radio. So shout out to Spinnaker. This song is called NPR. Where they broke 